Hello everyone, it's Melinda and today we're going to be talking about Amatrine, which as you may have guessed is a combination of amethyst and citrine. However, there are many people who argue that it is not technically true citrine. Um, and if you're familiar with my other videos, I recently did one on citrine where I discussed how common it is that citrine is faked um, and that the grand majority of the citrine that we have on the market today is actually heat treated amethyst. Now, many people argued that heat treated amethyst is citrine because it's the same geological process. Doesn't matter if a, a man does that geological process or not. I personally do think it makes a difference, but there's even more to it that is involved in it not being a true citrine um, and even natural uh, citrine found in amethyst is now argued to not really be citrine either um, <clears throat> and I'm going to go into all the scientific details as to why that is um, so if you're uh, one of the folks that think um, you know heat treated amethyst is citrine because that's that is citrine It's the same you know chemical process a uh, geological process happening there um, it is in fact not so stay tuned for that but first let's go over uh, the basics of what we know for amitrine or what is commonly known um, I'll start first with this point uh, and these are cut and polished points we can tell they're not uh, natural double terminated points um, they're lacking a lot of uh, quartz's natural kind of striations on faces um, it's just it's it, you kind of get a feel for them after a while and generally most of them um, have been cut and polished um, particularly when they look you know also just oh so perfect like this um, <laughs> and you know what that doesn't matter to me whatsoever I absolutely love my specimens um, <clears throat> so here we go so amitrine uh, is also known as tristine or by its trade name bolivianite uh, it is a naturally occurring variety of quartz it is a mixture of amethyst and citrine with zones of purple and yellow or orange Almost all commercially available amitrine is mined in Bolivia. Okay. Are there fakes? Um, there are certainly, certainly uh, real amitrine crystals, particularly from Bolivia, um, but can these be faked? Absolutely. Unfortunately, they can be faked. Um, natural amethyst is dichroic in reddish violet and bluish violet, but when it's heated, it turns a yellow orange or a yellow brown to a dark brownish color and may resemble citrine, but it loses its dichroism, unlike genuine citrine. Therefore, there is a chemical and structural uh, difference between heated amethyst and natural citrine. Um, so when amethyst is partially heated, it can result in these little patches of, um, you know, what is marketed as citrine within them. Um, and I guess results in an amitrine uh, that is kind of hard to, to sell as fake because it's not, it's a natural amethyst point that's possibly been given a little bit of a slight heat, um, you know, treatment to kind of bring out a little bit of a different color in it. Um, but was it found like this? If you're not paying a lot of money for it, most likely not. Um, <clears throat> so in natural amitrine, the color of the zones visible within are due to differing oxidation states of iron within the crystal. 
the citrine segments have oxidized iron, whereas the amethyst segments are unoxidized. So that's what causes the different colors within, within sorry, natural ametrine. Um, so again, within the purple amethyst areas, the iron has not been oxidized, whereas in the uh, yellowy, orangey, browny areas, the iron has been oxidized. Uh, the different oxidation states occur due to there being a temperature gradient across the crystal during its formation. So there were different uh, temperatures occurring as it grew. So yellow and violet triangular zonations are a sign of the real deal. And this one certainly has uh, that triangle within where it seems to have started growing in a different color. So uh, it's possible that this one is uh, real. Um, I certainly didn't pay, uh, you know, a cheap amount for it, uh, but it wasn't overboard either. So I'm not sure, but it is a absolutely lovely piece. I have this larger one as well. Isn't that gorgeous? So this one, I, I will make our way around, but I don't believe it has that uh, triangular zonation like the other one does. And this one was fairly affordable, uh, especially for the size of it. So I have my suspicions that, that this one may have been heated a little bit to get those different colors in there. But without, um, you know, investigating its dichroic uh, qualities, I wouldn't really be able to know for sure. So that's the basics of what you'll find on Ametrine until you dig a little deeper. And I like to try my very best to dig... Uh, into the, the more official geological type sites to see what they're saying. Um, so in that case, I found that ametrine owes its name to it being amethyst and citrine. Purple zones are amethyst, yet the yellow-orange zones are not citrine because they are colored by inclusions of ferrous minerals, or, you know, in more simpler terms, iron. Uh, and we discussed that earlier, how ametrine gets its color and it is from iron. There's iron present in the amethyst as well, it just hasn't been oxidized, whereas the iron uh, in the citrine areas have been oxidized. Uh, but that whole process relies on iron. Whereas natural citrine's color is highly debated, um, and if you're, you really don't believe that, please look up um, citrine on the Mindat or Mindat website. Um, you'll see it all discussed there, uh, and that is, you know, a really nice official source to rely on. Um, <clears throat> so citrine's color is, natural citrine's color is very debated. Most agree that natural citrine is colored by aluminum-based in irradiation-induced centers related, related to smoky quartz. Um, and that's why typically natural citrine um, isn't this orangey uh, color, although these ones are not quite as orange, uh, but they are a little bit more on the orange side because of, um, again, the ferric inclusions, the iron inclusions, uh, rather than being aluminum based um, in irradiated smoky quartz. Uh, the true natural citrines tend to be a little smoky uh, with like tinges of yellow or a very light yellow. Um, but typically you'll find it more so along like the smoky line. Um, so there are some that who uh, that argue it could be due to ferric impurities. Um, but generally uh, in these modern days that those people are not the majority. Okay, so let's try to summarize what we've learned. Um, <clears throat> so, ametrine, 
uh, is a combination of amethyst and what is marketed as citrine. However, it is not the same as natural citrine. Okay, um, so amethyst is a quartz mineral that includes iron impurities and even some other mineral impurities. And when it is irradiated, uh, so when there is radiation or um, radioactive minerals nearby, um, <clears throat> those iron impurities, those other mineral impurities are activated. And that's what turns the quartz purple. Okay, so amethyst is literally quartz uh, with impurities that have been irradiated. Fascinating, right? Oh, it totally blows my mind. So, um, <clears throat> in this case, the crystal was full of iron impurities. Um, it was irradiated, which caused the purple areas, but the iron was oxidized unlike in the purple areas, in the yellowy, orangey, browny areas, and that's what caused the different colors. It was the oxidization. All right. Here's another one. This one tends to have just more smoky areas. Slight tinge of warmness in those smoky areas. Um, but definitely not enough for me to think, oh, this must have been faked. Uh, I definitely think this is just um, a natural amethyst with some smoky quartz areas or some, uh, you know, slightly not technically citrine areas, but marketed as citrine areas. Uh, so I thought I'd include it in this video. So... Can heat-treated amethyst, man-heat-treated amethyst, truly be considered citrine? No, it cannot. Um, na again, natural citrine is colored by aluminum-based and irradiated-induced centers um, related to smoky quartz. So it's not the same process, um, and it doesn't contain uh, necessarily the same chemical impurities. It's not, uh, it's just simply not the same. Um, <clears throat> and that doesn't mean that our heat treated amethyst specimens are, you know, no good. They're so gorgeous. I have quite a few. I made a video showcasing many of them. I absolutely love them. And I will continue to label them as uh, citrine. But I just think it's important to know that there is a difference and to be able to recognize that, that difference. Um, so if you're curious to know how to tell um, a heat-treated amethyst citrine from a natural citrine, um, I think I went over a few things here, but there are certainly more ways to tell, uh, and you can watch my citrine video to learn all about that. Yeah. All right, there were only three cut and polished ones. <laughs> But I still think there was a lot of information imparted there, and I hope it was, you know, nice and informative. Um, I certainly learned a lot about all of this, about citrine, about amethyst, about smoky quartz, about ametrine. Um, oh my goodness, my brain is just full of it from the last couple of weeks. Um, and some of you gave me a lot to think about after the last video, so I dug a little deeper for this one. Um... I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, I just love making these. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bye.